Hi everyone, Don Singletary and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about some trading tips using that MACD trade signal indicator and another great live trade. I think you'll really like this one. Coming up today I'm going to be using the Russell 2000 index again. So stand by for that and a lot more. You know, I really do appreciate your uh, comments by email and those you put under the videos here on the channel. A common question I get is, uh, I can only trade part-time and I've got a couple hours a day I'm going to be trading. How many trades should I be doing? Uh, well, I'm going to show you the answer to this question in a different way. I'm just going to take my phone. I'm going to call the market, tell them what time I'm trading. I'll be trading 10 till noon. Uh, I'd like to trade the uh, Russell 2000. Risk no more than 2% of my account. A 3 to 1 fixed reward risk ratio. And um, did I mention uh, I might have to leave early today. Is that going to be okay? All right. I'll see you at 10 o'clock. I wish it were that easy. Wouldn't that really be nice if you could just phone the market up and tell them what time you're going to be there and how much you want to risk? Well, I like to say I'm being facetious here, obviously, to make a point. You can't tell the market what to do. It will tell you. Now, if the market's telling us what to do or what it may or may not do next, we need to learn how to use the trade signal indicators to give us a hint about what's coming, what's happening, and what we're diving in in the middle of at any moment we make a trade. And that's what I want to talk to you about this chart today. Now stand by because that live trade with the Russell 2000 is coming up in just a moment. I want to give you the, uh, let's, let's see the bird's eye view of this particular day. This was uh, the 28th of January, 2021. What you're looking at here is a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The symbol for the micro E-mini is MY. M. And uh, we're going to look at an entire day's trading. I'm uh, zooming in here. You can see the market opens at uh, 930 on schedule and over here closes at 4 p.m. And what I want to look at is what the market did during the entire day. We'll get kind of a bird's eye view. And also in the lower pane there is the MACD. And uh, I'm going to compare the MACD to what happened price-wise during the day. And uh, let's do that right now. See the first hour and a half from 9.30 until about 11 o'clock, the market goes up. And uh, correspondingly, the green line is above the red line in the MACD panel in the bottom frame. So that's how the market starts out. It zooms up pretty quickly. Now, it's easy to see so far, from 9.30 to 11 at least, the main trend of the day is undoubtedly up, and up by a pretty good amount. But look what happens over here at around 11.15 uh, or 11.20. The MACD indicator, there's a crossover. The green line right here goes below the red line. And that momentum continues to decrease all the way up until 4 o'clock for the rest of the day. But look in the upper pane. What happens at 11.15, 11.20 up there? The market for the next two hours from noon until 2 o'clock is absolutely flat. Had you traded at that crossover when the green line went below the red line trying to scalp a few points, you would have been going against the trend of the day, number one. You're supposed to stay with uh, the trend is your friend most of the time when you're trading. Now, what happens here is though the momentum is going down, you can see up top the price is not going down at all. In fact, it stays up for two hours and the momentum is decreasing the entire time. Obviously, you can't use a MACD to go against that trend. But there is something that happens at right about 2.30 to 2.15, somewhere in here. You see down in the bottom pane at the MACD from 2.30 until 4 o'clock, the MACD with the green line below the red line goes below that zero reference line. And from that point, look up top, you see what happens. At that point, when it goes below the zero line, the prices start to come down. That means the trend for the day had ended and when you see that uh, crossover happen below that zero reference line.
And that's a, a great point to know when you're using the MACD as a trade signal indicator. And uh, that zero reference line, I get a lot of questions because uh, at the beginning videos, I say only go short when the green line is below the red line and they're both below the zero line. Well, this is a good example of why. Now, that, that guideline is not, I repeat, not always correct. You have to use it contextually and you'll learn to do that better and better with experience as you go along. Now, not every day has a, a clear trend. There are plenty of trading times when there's no uh, prevalent trend at all, no dominating trend that you can, you can uh, surf the wave on, so to speak. But this is a great example of using the MACD uh, to keep you out of a bad trade because if you knew the trend is your friend and you see that crossover way above zero line, uh, you'd know not to go short at that particular time. And that is a piece of very helpful information. Now in each new video, I try to put in some kind of trading tip for you, like the one we did today. And also I'm trying to include a live trade each week too that I record and uh, go over with you very carefully, which is a good time for me to remind you I need your help. The like button on this channel, if you click the like button, it tells me, yeah, I want to see more videos like the one I'm watching now. That's what the like button means here. So please use it. It helps me uh, stay on key with the audience here so I can make better videos for you. And then while you're at it, be sure and subscribe so you won't miss the next new video posting as it comes up. Sign up for the bell so you'll get those notifications. Now before I move on to the live trade today with that M2K, I've thought about one more thing that happened the very next day. The earlier chart in this video was January 28th. This is the next day on January 29th, 2021. And on this chart, we're also using the DJIA Micro E-Mini MACD, same standard setup you see on the channel all the time. And if you're a beginner, I want to remind you, uh, if this is too advanced for you, after you finish the video, go back and look down below um, the uh, text below this video, and you'll find uh, a, a playlist, two playlists with four 10-minute videos each for beginners on the channel to kind of bring you up to speed. Now, here's the chart I want to look at that's almost the mirror image of the one on January 28th, the day before. So here we go. Okay, market opens at 9.30 on schedule, Eastern time. You can see the market goes up right away. And uh, look at the price variations during the day. This chart runs from 9.30 out till about uh, 2.40 p.m., I think. Uh, but look at the zero line in the bottom panel now on the MACD. Look at that black horizontal zero line. And then watch the MACD indicators as the day changes. Now the market opens up. Green line is over the red line. It's all hovering around the zero line. Not a lot of strong direction in the market. Not yet. And uh, about uh, 11 o'clock you see the green line. At the same time now, the green line goes below the red line. And right after 11 o'clock, right here, you see they both go below the zero line. And uh, according to my guidelines, not rules, just guidelines, uh, that would be a sell signal right here. Now, I want to point out something to you right here. We're using a chart where um, we're, we're going back in time. In other words, we have the genius, the full genius of hindsight. And everything looks so easy when you do it this way. But uh, I'm going to talk to you now about this particular trade. So you're short at 30140 Now, I know you probably can't read the right scale price, so just take my word for it because I want to keep the whole chart in view rather than zooming in so we can keep our minds focused on the big picture. So we're short at 30140 Now, the width of each candlestick in time is five minutes. So you see that five or ten minutes into the trade, uh, it's going down and we have uh, some profit in the trade. It's gone down to around 30100 And uh, you uh, get stuck because only ten minutes later into the trade, even though you're, you're, uh, you're up 40 points, uh, count the candlesticks here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight candlesticks, eight times five. For 40 minutes, the trade goes nowhere. Now, what would you do? 
Would you say trades are going nowhere? I'm going to take the money and move on. Now, we have the genius of hindsight, and we see had we endured that 40 minutes, we could have gotten uh, a lot more money on the trade. But uh, these are the things that you make, the decisions you make during the trade. And it's not nearly so easy as it looks in hindsight here because during that 40 minutes, you get uh, three or four price reversals and uh, none of them really risk much of your profit. So you may have stayed in, but you may not. 40 minutes when you're trading and watching this thing is a long, long time. And you have a lot of time for your mind to play tricks on you. So how possibly, now I do have the genius of hindsight here, I could have looked and right around here, I'm going to see that uh, my momentum seems to be waning a little bit, uh, about 30 minutes into that 40 minutes, around noon. Uh, had I stuck it out, uh, it would have gone uh, great and it probably gotten out of a trade somewhere down here. But uh, this just goes to reemphasize the thing that I say very, very often in the videos. You always, in trading, have to make decisions before you have all the perfect information to make a perfect decision. So just do the best you can. Don't beat yourself up. And along with experience, uh, you'll learn to read the charts a little bit better. Now, one thing, and again, this is with the genius of hindsight, we see that even though the red and green lines look like they may come together around noon, uh, look where they are. They're over on the right scale. The relative strength indicator, the MACD, is uh, around uh, 40 to 60 minus down. That's a lot of negative momentum. And an experienced trader might have used that to say, well, I'm going to stay in this trade a little bit since it's so negative and see what happens next. But uh, what would I have done or you have done? We'd have to go back and uh, do it in, in real time, which is why I feature a lot of live trades here on the channel. They're just not the same as this genius of hindsight stuff. One of the things I try to do here on the channel is keep the trades uh, to down to one or two micro contracts and to keep it small so beginners can have a low risk way. They don't have to risk a lot of money in order to be able to learn how to trade. After all, that's the advantage of the micro futures anyway, because before that you had to trade like 20 or $50 a point. And in the micro e minis you're trading from 50 cents to $5 a point. So it's uh, pretty reasonable. So today's, uh, trade of the week in our live trade today none of the uh, genius of hindsight stuff is uh, a russell 2001 contract why the russell 2000 well in this fourth week of january uh, some of the major tech stocks had uh, earnings report this week which made the nasdaq the group of uh, that's known as the techs uh, a little more uh, volatile than some of the others so for that reason and the reason that the um, the uh, margin is lower on the Russell 2K than it is on uh, any of the other micro e-minis. So that's why I chose that today. January 28th, 11.14 in the morning, Eastern Time, I shorted one Russell 2000 at 2109.60. And uh, the trade's getting off to a start here. The reason I sold it at this particular time, if you look down here in the uh, lower pane, you'll see that the red and green lines are uh, green below red and both below that zero line there. So that's why I did that. I had to wait a while because up in this area right here, when you see this pattern right here, you can be sure that the market is going nowhere fast. Those squirrely lines that weave in and out of each other in the MACD. Poor time to trade. As you can see here, the market's trading about uh, 2107 and a half. I'm up about 10 or $11. And uh, the trade is seeming to go my way. It started off and I've had little to no drawdown right away. Now the market's trading about uh, 2105.50 right now. So uh, I'm anxious uh, to try to fulfill my rule number one, that is protect myself from any major losses on this trade. And so I put in a, a fairly close stop. The market's trading at 2104 and I'm up at 2108. Four points away feels comfortable right now. 
And we'll see what happens with this. 2108. Now, if you're brand new to this type of trading, it may look like when I go from charts to the position tab that I'm going all over the place with a mouse and everything, but it's not really true. There's only two tabs I'm using. I'll show you in a moment. Four minutes into the trade, and I'm adjusting my stop again right now. The market's down to 2103, and I'm going to try to squeak in here and change that uh, stop to 2106, about three points, uh, two and a half, three points away from the market. I was saying the positions tab, and that's the page we're on right now, and then I'm using the chart tab down here, and I'm going back and forth between the two. So I'm not really um, going a lot of places, just two different screens, this screen and then the chart screen, of course, and, and this is part of the uh, entering the trade screen now. I'm trading 2102 and a half, and uh, I'm going to take a look at moving my stop down just a little bit more. I'm really staying on top of this trade because I don't know it could reverse at any time. MACD still looks good, as you can see there in the lower pane. And we're trading down at uh, 2100 now. We're about nine and a half points ahead, which is uh, pretty darn good. Now I'm going to go over and use the drag and drop. I'm using the left mouse cursor button here, the left button, I should say, 2104. I highlight it and then hold the left button down and drag it to the new price where I want the stop to be. As you see, I can slide it up and down, but until I let go, it doesn't enter the order. And you can see right here, it's going to enter the order right there at 2103.20 is where the stop is now. You can see I'm up $41, $42 in the trade now. And the market is trading at 2101. And my stop is about two points up at 2103.20. Now I click on the chart tab again and zoom in a little bit. My stop's 2103.20. And we're trading uh, way down again. Trade's going in our favor, 2098.60. I just moved the stop again by the click and drag method. As you can see here on the positions tab, uh, it verifies a 2101.90 stop. And the market's trading at uh, 2096 and a half right now. So uh, we're doing pretty well. I'm bringing the stop down just a little bit more. The click and drag again. Remember the left mouse button. And this time, let's see where it lands here. 2100.20 is where it is. Now you can see my unrealized profit is $60. Now keep your eye on that unrealized profit. It was $60, about 61 actually, and now it's back down to 57, back up to 58. Uh, market's trying to decide where to go again. It's trading 2098. And my stop is uh, barely two points up. And uh, right now I'm going to go over and rethink where I'm running my stop at. The market's trading 2097.60. And I'm going to take that left mouse button and uh, move the stop over again here. And then change it again almost immediately. Let's see where it stops out. This time I'm bringing it down to uh, 2098 even and I'm trading 20 96 95 90 so that's uh, that's pretty close that's only like less than two points away and let's see how much of this uh, I'm back up to 6850 unrealized profits again I do not want to give that money up it just hit sixty nine dollars fifty cents seventy one seventy two dollars up there the market's trading down at 20 94 and a half right now so it's time to to move that stop down just a little bit more. You never know how long these trends are going to last. And uh, this time, my stop comes out at uh, 20.096.1. And I'm up uh, almost $80 in the trade now. And my stop is uh, only uh, like 1.8 points away. So I'm running it pretty close here. But... Uh, I don't want to give all the money back, so I don't mind bringing it on down. It's been a great trade. And this time, I uh, use my left mouse button, 2094.90. And uh, I'm just one point away from being stopped out on this trade now. The market's trading uh, 2093.30. 
Some about one and a half points away on the stop there. Just waiting to see what's going to happen here. I'm $83 up in unrealized profit right now. And very, very close to being stopped out in this trade. And uh, I won't mind because it's been a fairly short trade. And there we go. It stopped out right there at um, 20, 93.7. I mean, 15.9 points, which is 79 and a half dollars. Now, one thing about this trade that went uh, really well, you may have noticed I was really aggressive. I forget how many times I moved that stop, six, seven, eight times. But I, uh, I stayed with it. I had a lot of tenacity on this trade. And the only reason I say that is because I want you to realize that's what you have to have sometimes to squeeze it out of a good trade. Now, when you do what I just did, you run the risk of being stopped out too soon in a trade and not letting the profits run. But uh, I just didn't feel like, uh, call it intuition or whatever, like this trade had a lot of gas left in it at the time I was stopped out. That was a really fun trade, and I won't lie to you. After I was up $80 in 10 minutes with uh, just one micro contract, sometimes you get a gift, you know? Whether it's good luck or experience or good trading, uh, I never really know sometimes, and I've never quite been able to figure that out. But sometimes you just say thank you and you take the money. I was thinking when I got out of that trade a few seconds before, you know, $80 in 10 minutes, uh, I'm not going to have a bad trade with this one. And uh, sometimes that's the way it rolls. It makes up for a lot of times when it doesn't go your way too. But that's what you got to remember. This is risky trading and it takes a little luck, a little experience, and you certainly have to have some tenacity sometimes when you go after that money. And there's just one more thing. Well, two things actually. Uh, Investors Business Daily newspaper voted uh, Tastyworks as the number one broker in all their categories for the year 2020. Uh, as you can see, I use them here on the channel all the time. I have an affiliate link at the broker link below this where you can get more information on Tastyworks. It's, it's a fun software to use. They have it for uh, desktop, tablet, all that. The software is free, and so are the money transfers uh, in and out of your bank account and a lot of other things. They don't nickel and dime you. Tastyworks, look for the broker link below. And remember, the book that cost about the same as a Chick-fil-A with waffle potatoes. Day trading micro futures for income. It can make uh, learning faster and easier for you. And uh, the proceeds from the book are what makes the channel with all these videos free. Look for the book link below. And I appreciate that. I'm Don Singletary. I hope every day is a payday for you. And thank you.